CS Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes, tamu sana. There are two speeches that are currently going viral. One speech is from Martha Karua, and the next speech is from Peter Munya. Some few days ago, William Ruto and his brigade were in Meru, where they pressed Peter Munya for his good performance. In fact, Rigardi Gashagwa made it clear to the whole nation that Peter Munya ni mchapakazi, actually quoting the exact term he used. So Peter Munya has actually answered them back. So in this video, or rather in this video right now, I want us to have a keen look at those two speeches, after which, as usual, we are going to dissect them to see exactly hmm, what they all mean politically. That's going to form the basis of our analysis and discussion today. So if in case you've just bumped on this YouTube channel for the very, very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. Thank you. God bless you. Have a look at these two short clips. And anybody who thinks there's a good thief, I challenge you to go and allow that chicken thief in your backyard to steal your chicken, eat it, and make you soup from the lower legs so that you can appreciate the generosity of that thief. When we steal from public coffers and bring you handouts, we are like that thief. I am pleading with the residents of Mount Kenya and all Kenyans, let us elect with our minds, not our stomachs. Ata ukikula nini kutoka kwa mwenzako, chaguana na fikra na sio tumbo. Hii siyasa ya tanga tanga, itaribu inti ya Kenya. Tukiendelea hivyo, inti itaribika. Hiyo ni siyasa duni hiyo. Siyasa ya ukuzi. Oh, wakulima wajalipwa bonus kubwa. Wangelipwa na bonus gani na mume watu wenu mlisimamia factory mmeiba pesa yote. <laughs> Makatero yale mnachikana nao wameharibu soko. Sasa bonus ingepatikana wapi? Hakuna. <laughs> Kuongea maneno au ujui na speed atuelewe ni ya nini. Kila siku mikutano kwa soko. Hey, si wewe nini? Oh, mama mboga, si mama gani? Angalia <laughs> <laughs> Umekuwa kwa serikali miaka nane yes. Ukiwa juu kule Kwanza wendi ulikuwa mkubwa di unasunguka Au kujua kuna mama mboga <laughs> Taindi umetikama kuna mama mboga kwa sababu kura imetika Hati mboga msiwi bonda bonda Mamba ya boga ya tujui Na boda mamba Hati watu wako kwa CRB Kuna wa wako hata kwa CRB kama nyinyi hapo mko mandeni ya 3 321 million mko kwa CRB yeye yeah, ajui na ana time kwa sababu anasunguka kila siku unawezaje kuzunguka kwa miaka 5 5 years ukizunguka kampeni gani hiyo kampeni na uko na kiti na kazi ufanye unaona hiyo ikiwa sawa sawa mbaya tena siasa ya fitina kila mahali fitina wale wanamfuata ni wafitina hatujapiza kampeni tuko tuko kasini tuko kasini na hata tukifika kampeni si ipiwe it, kampeni ya utulivu uombe kura ueleze watu utawafanyia nini mwingine naye yaombe wananchi wafanye nini waamue kwa sababu ndio wako na kura sasa kelele siwi mawe muende mpigane Sasa ukinipiga na jiwe hapa, umetukua kura kwa mfuko yangu. Sisi tunaendelea kuchapa kazi. Video diwe tunafanya na tunaendelea na mna hiyo. Yes. Listening to those two leaders speaking, they seem to be all talking one message. They are talking about a thief. So the mere fact that almost all top leaders in Kenya currently are seemingly in an agreement that William Ruto might be a thief actually raises so many questions, yes. But that's not our analysis today. So, what does that mean politically? Mm -hmm. Listening to those two leaders, what can we draw from their speeches? That's our analysis and discussion. 
There are five things that I can learn or draw from those two speeches. The first thing is the mountain politics is now taking shape. The mountain politics is now falling in place. Top leaders are following their ethnic kingpin who happens to be the president, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. If you look across the mountain, almost all top leaders from Mount Kenya are supporting Uhuru Kenyatta, Raila Odinga Khan. Why is it that only naive and first-time leaders or members of parliament are supporting William Ruto? That's a question, ladies and gentlemen, that maybe you can answer for yourself. But from where I sit, I tend to believe that these top leaders, they have already known the most probable direction their people will eventually take. And from where I sit, as time goes by, I'm seeing the mountain residents of Mount Kenya all following Uhuru Kenyatta's direction. That's one thing I can read from those two speeches because those are two linear, those are two senior Mount Kenya politicians. And they know the, the terrain, the political terrain of the mountain. The second thing that comes out clearly, they are raising the issue of corruption. That's an indication that corruption will effectively be used against William Ruto, not only in Mount Kenya, but also across the country. You know, all senior leaders in Kenya today, if you listen to Uru Kenyatta speak, he's actually saying he'll not leave power to a thief. If you hear Kalonzo Musioka talk, he's also talking about a thief. If you hear Raila Molo Odiga talk, they seem to be all saying the same, same thing. They are talking about a thief how they are going to fight corruption. Why is it, ladies and gentlemen, that almost all top leaders in Kenya are all in agreement that William Ruto might be corrupt? Mm. You know, these leaders, they know one another. And just have, as I've always in, insinuated in this channel, these top leaders, it's as if they are in a club. You know, in a club, <laughs> people know one another. You know, this is somebody of this character, this is Uyanakaseri Karaka. In a club, you, you tend to know one another. So the mere fact that all these top leaders are all in agreement that William Ruto might be corrupt, it also raises some questions. And it also just proves that the corruption card will be used very, very effectively against William Ruto as we head towards 2022 election. That's something that also comes out very clearly from those two speeches. And then the third thing, Munya is actually answering back Tangatanga. Tanga. He's answering them back. Because if you study Tangatanga's Tanga's brand of politics, Tangatanga Tanga have really perfected the art of propaganda. They are really using that tool very, very effectively to get political mileage. Some few days ago, Ruto and his brigade were in Meru County. And we saw them mercilessly attacking Kiraitu Murungi. But on the other side, or rather on one side, they were actually praising Peter Munya, calling Peter Munya Mchapakazi. And that's a video I did some times back. And I did indicate the main reason why they were praising Peter Munya was to create some kind of confusion among Peter Munya supporters. So Peter Munya knows their game plan and is trying to beat them in their game plan by also coming out to disown them in public. You know, assuming Peter Munya could have gone quiet, then some of his supporters could have assumed that he's in some kind of a cordial working relationship or understanding with Tangatanga, Tanga, William Ruto in his team. So Peter Munya is just cleverly answering them back. He's beating them in their own game. He's stating that he has nothing and cannot work with them. I think he's just trying to beat them in their own game. And then another point that also comes out clearly, the fourth point, it also brings into question Ruto's performance in government. You know, in 2017, when Jubilee Party were campaigning for a re-election, William Ruto was the face of Jubilee Party. In fact, some of the main promises, it was William Ruto who was making those promises loud and clear to Kenyans. Kenyans can still remember 
the issue of the stadiums, Camarine Stadium, in the next six months. In fact, it was actually nicknamed Mr. Six Months. So during 2017 election, Jubilee Party, or rather Jubilee, was campaigning, and as they were campaigning, they were giving out some promises. And William Ruto was the voice and the face of those promises. But since 2018, William Ruto has been on a constant campaign trail. He has been campaigning since 2018. So Kenyans are also asking, just as also Peter Munya is asking, how can you campaign for five good years? When, when did William Ruto sit in, in his office to at least deliver on, the, on some of the promises he made in 2018? We've most likely been seeing William Ruto campaigning. And something that also angers Kenyans in some quarters is that actually William Ruto has not delivered on the promises he made to Kenyans, or rather he promised Kenyans in 2017. And there we have him again coming to make new promises. That now if you elect me in 2022, I will do this, I will do that for you. But now, how comes he will do all those things he's promising in 2022, while still he has not even been able to fulfill the ones he made in 2017? And that's actually also what Peter Munya is just also trying to insinuate. So that also just exposes William Ruto as a liar. Eh? A liar. A leader who cannot be trusted because if they were, the promises he made, actually, they were elected. And he has not fulfilled that. Or rather, he has not fulfilled them. How sure are Kenyans that the new promises he's making, he will actually fulfill? So that also just shows that William Ruto cannot be relied upon or cannot be trusted. The promises he's trying to make, Kenyans might not actually take them seriously. They might, they might just be talks as usual. And then the fifth point, the mere fact that all top Mount Kenya leaders are largely avoiding William Ruto also speaks volumes. Why is it that William Ruto is finding it very easy to work with the less experienced politicians from Mount Kenya. All top leaders, all, almost all governors, save for Anwe Guru, are all avoiding William Ruto. Martha Karua is not a pushover. That's a senior politician from Mount Kenya. In fact, during 2007 post-election violence, Martha Karua was considered as the Iron Lady. She was seen as the face hmm, of Mai Kibaki's government. And why is it now that all these top leaders are all avoiding William Ruto? But only first-time members of parliament and leaders with no experience are actually working with William Ruto. That also exposes Ruto as a leader who is not a team player. Mm, he's not a team player. I tend to believe that maybe he finds it easy working with less experienced leaders who he can trample upon. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to work with somebody who has got an independent voice. He just wants leaders that he can trample upon so that his word is law and his word is everything. I tend to believe that also exposes Ruto as a leader who is arrogant, full of himself, selfish, and self-centered. He is also overconfident uh, of himself. That's why these top leaders are actually avoiding him. So, ladies and gentlemen, having listened to those two speeches, I tend to believe that these are the five main reasons that we can learn from those two speeches. The, these are the main reasons. There might be other reasons, but I believe these are the main reasons. So, just as I did indicate when you were starting, if you've just bumped on this YouTube channel for the very, very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. And to those watching us outside of outside Kenya, our fans outside Kenya, kindly drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. Drop a comment please. And if you have not yet subscribed, also subscribe and if possible, give this video a like. Give it a like please. And now to our fans and subscribers in this YouTube channel. I'm very, very much humbled and very, very grateful for the kind of support you are giving me here. You can see we have now reached, or rather hit the 15,000 subscribers mark. That's a 
<laughs> that's something that is really very positive and has really give me, given me some joy. It's not very easy to reach that kind of a big number within this very short time we have managed to do. And that's largely because of your continued support by constantly giving our videos likes, constantly dropping your comments on a daily basis. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya. And to any other person who is also a fan of ours here, you might be loving and liking our videos, but you have not yet subscribed. Take this opportunity today, hit on the subscription button, and if possible, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Tamu sana. Tamu sana. Tamu sana.